Boys, welcome back to a brand new Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links leak video. And today we got some more Arc 5 news, which is really nice because Arc 5 World is coming very, very soon. And I'm beyond excited for the new world that's coming out. But as you guys can tell from the title and thumbnail, we're gonna be talking about the day one characters for Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 World because we got some new leaks from our Lord and Savior Elfo Man who went missing for a couple months, but I think he got out of Konami jail to leak us some more content. So credit goes to this guy right here. He's a reliable leaker. And we're gonna take a look at all the new leaks from duelingsmeta.com so if you guys are excited you guys know what to do for some new arc 5 news hit the like button on the video down below and sub to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content because we're going to be releasing a ton of new stuff on the new cross duel game on the new arc 5 worlds coming out this month we got a ton of exciting stuff coming out too and i'm playing different types of Yu-Gi-Oh games so if you're a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh, whatever you're what like what are you doing subscribe to this channel anyways though let's get into it but first a word from our sponsor so today's video is brought to us by Zero Helix, who reached out to me to advertise this little project that he's working on to get LEGO and Yu-Gi-Oh to make a collaboration happen. He did this mock-up on a Dark Tradition and Blue SY Dragon versing each other, and I would love for this thing to be reality. So when he reached out to me telling me about this project, I just had to shout it out in some sort of video. So make sure to take a look in the link in the description down below to sign up to make a LEGO account to sign this petition to make this thing a reality. It'd be really appreciated. And back to the video. So as you can see right here, here, here is all the leaks that we got. And this is basically confirming some of the ace monsters that we're getting for some of the characters, which is really, really, really exciting. We have the character descriptions for Yuya, Zuzu, and Declan, which are going to be the potential three characters that are going to be day one in Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 World. Now, there's a lot of speculation on Declan, which we'll get into in today's video, but for sure, Yuya, which is an obvious day one character, and Zuzu, which is also another obvious day one character, has got confirmed here. And we're going to go take a look at the character descriptions and take a look at their ace cards, because as you can see, this is a new ace card that we have not talked about on my channel yet. So that's going to be pretty exciting. So let's get into it. So for Yuya right here, as you can see right here, Yuya attends Yusho Dual School, which isn't exactly the most popular dual school in Paradise City, but that won't stop him from becoming a great dual tanner like his father, Yusho Shikaki. I cannot pronounce that guy's name, but shout, shout out to Yuya's deadbeat dad. Uh, when his dad gave him a special pendulum shaped pendant, he never knew its powers would allow him to become the first ever duelist to pendulum summon, making him the pioneer for a whole new way of dueling with his odd eyes pendulum dragon. I cannot wait for this card to come into dual legs by his side yuya is ready to swing into action and as you can see with this beautiful 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 card right here and these wonderful artworks easily this is my favorite artwork so i hope we can get this in dueling someday but oh nice pendulum dragon right here i don't think we've ever talked about this guy like full on on my channel right here but he's an awesome ace monster he has 2500 attack 2000 defense like a lot of the other ace monsters that the other protagonists have and then again if you have not watched my guide on how to pendulum summon take a look at that if you're a dual links player but but with pendulum cards, they have both spell and monster effects. The monster effect, when this card battles an opponent's monster, any battle damage this card inflicts to your opponent is doubled like with Odd Eyes Dragon. Because fun fact, Odd Eyes Dragon evolves into Pendulum Dragon in the anime of Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5. And then this pendulum effect says you can reduce the battle damage you take from an attack evolving a pendulum monster you control to zero during your end phase you can destroy this card and if you do add a pendulum monster of 1500 or less attack from your deck to your hand you know, can use each pendulum effect of eyes pendulum dragon once per turn so this card's really cool because again if you have another card in your scale you can pop this card and then search for another uh, pendulum monster which is awesome and on top of that, you can make your dial damage go to zero. And yeah, Otis Pendulum Dragon's cool too, because um, you can actually use this card to search for other Pendulum cards. And on top of that, he's a nice little beat stick that's a level seven to go into some spicy rank seven plays. So I love this guy. I cannot wait to use this card and do a length. He's an awesome card. Next up, we have Zuzu over here. And this is awesome to see her into the game. Of course, this was pretty obvious that Zuzu is going to be a day one character here. But again, she's one of the few like female protagonist characters that actually does a good job in the show except kind of in the end of the show if you guys have seen arc 5 but at the beginning she was a really good uh female protagonist character so it's awesome to see her in the game as you can see right here as yuya's lifelong friend zuzu isn't afraid to tell it like it is and put yuya in check when it goes too far she's also the daughter of skip boyle the head teacher of you show dual school she wears a unique bracelet that she has never taken off some say she was born with it on her wrist hmm i wonder if that has to do with some of the other cool characters we can get in arc 5 world this is like one of the few Yu-Gi-Oh shows that I actually watch, so I, I understand all these references from Arc 5. <laughs> this bracelet emits a strange power when she least expects it, which often can get her into trouble, but she doesn't always want to count on Yuya to bail her out, so she learns how to fusion summon to protect herself in Yu-Show Dual School. Her ace monster is Bloom Diva, the Millennialist Choir. 
So that's really exciting here. Again, I'm very curious to see how Arc 5 World is going to work out because of the fact that that's going to incorporate all sorts of summoning uh, mechanics on top of Pendulum Summoning in its story. So it's really cool that we're going to get some fusion support here and then Pendulum support with Yuya and Daklin, which is really cool. And it looks like that our ace monster is Bloom Diva, the Millennium Choir. And from what I've heard, this card is pretty good. I have not read this card personally, so let's go take a look. So this is a light level six fairy fusion monster, and it takes one Miletus Maestra monster plus a Miletus monster to summon into this card. It cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. Also, you take no battle damage from attacks evolving this card. If this card battles a special summoned monster after damage calculation, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to the difference between the original attack of that opponent's monster and this card. And if you do destroy that opponent's monster, this card has a thousand attack and two thousand defense. So most likely this card isn't going to be just free from the character except through a skill because it has a decent effect right here from what I'm seeing here. It cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects and you take no battle damage. So this card is just toxic for stalling already. And if it battles a special summon monster after damage calculation, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to the difference between the original attack of that opponent's monster and this card. So if they keep that original attack effect right there, this card is going to be just super annoying to deal with. It's going to be the next invoked Coctus that is just going to be annoying to deal with. So we'll see how this card works in Duel Links as time goes on. I wonder if they're going to nerf that uh, effect, though, where it does half the original attack instead of just the original attack of the difference between the two cards. We'll have to wait and see here. And then uh, you get to pop the monster, too. Like, this card's just toxic, bro. Like, even if the skill adds this to the extra deck, I feel like this deck can be really toxic. So we'll see how this card works once she gets added to the game. Because, again, because they're kind of confirming in the leaks here that uh, Bloom Diva is, you know, a uh, ace monster. So we're going to get it through her skill, which is just crazy right here. So that is something to take a look at that's for sure and then the last one we're gonna take a look at right here is Declan Akaba and this one has some controversy within the community so we'll talk about it after we take a look at his character description which we're gonna do right now though Declan is only 16 years old this professional duelist has been running the Leo Corporation and the Leo Instituted Dueling as their president so he's basically the Kaiba of Arc 5 world as one of the select few who know the existence of other dimension he forms the Lancers to protect this world from interdimensional invaders he not only uses powerful fiend type DD and DDD monsters in his deck he may be the only duelist who has mastered four summoning methods fusion synchro exceeds and pendulum well come on konami yuya eventually masters all four of them spoiler alert but yuya also swings into action and does all those summoning mechanics like hello but anyways cool to see Declan is here but there's a chance there's a chance that Declan might not be a day one character so let's go take a look at this here so as you can see right here you guys all know him it's brad is hd the guy that covers all the leaks right away i appreciate all of you guys watching this video compared to him i really do but one thing that happened is that since he was one of the first people to talk about the new stuff coming into Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, a lot of people have been giving him some criticism on the fact that Declan is not going to be a day one character because in his video, he showcased that there was three different IDs for Yuya, Zuzu, and Declan. And as you can see right here, we have 501 for Yuya, 502 for Zuzu, and 505 for Declan right here. So a lot of people in the community are saying that Declan is not going to be a day one character simply through the um, IDs system right here. Now, if you do take a look at this right here, if you compare the IDs to the other characters that Brad showcased in this little diagram, I guess you could say this little graphic right here, you can see that that's not always the case with each character coming to the game. As you can see right here, Yuya and Zach Solo's 401, Tori at 405, Bronk at 406, and those were the day one characters of Zach Solo World, while Shark was 404, Kite was 407, and Quadra was 410. So even though typically, especially in older worlds, how Konami used to ID everybody accordingly, in like a numerical order i guess you could say it still isn't always the case even with uh gx right here you see like jaden 101 aster 103 chaz 105 lexus 106 bastion 110 even though he was a day one character with then uh your boy crowler at 107 so even though typically it's in that order you know dev teams and whatnot always kind of switch things up and it's not always a guarantee on the order of how things go even if the you know order of this stuff is you know incorrect but as you can see too with dsod world you can see all these character ids where konami clearly was thinking about adding like you uh yugi and joey very soon compared to sarah and scud but because as you can see with the ids are going you know one two three four and then skip to seven and nine even though they're planning to potentially release those characters at some point they still didn't right away so due to that like you can't really trust the id system on the fact that hey x character is going to be in x order so there's still a high chance that since we have the three character descriptions already for declan yuya and zuzu thanks to alpha man there's still a much like an extremely high chance that declan is confirmed to be a day one character but 
at the same time it's all not confirmed because at the end of the day these are leaks even though elfo man is pretty reliable when it comes to leaks all he did leak was just the character descriptions not the characters that are coming out day one in a Yu-Gi-Oh! arc 5 world so even though 505 is Declan's ID number. There's a high chance that he's going to be day one character due to the fact that we already have his character description, but there's still a good chance that it's not the case because we, you know, the world isn't out yet because they are leaks at the end of the day. It's just a lot of speculation, but a lot of people are getting upset at Brad here and Brad gets into more detail than what I'm talking about with um, this whole community post here. So you guys can go take a look at this channel and read it out for yourself if you want to form your own opinion on it. But it's going to be pretty safe to say that Declan is most likely going to be a day one character, which would actually be really cool for the, like the story part of Arc 5. But we can still get my boy Gong is a day one character instead of Declan. And maybe Declan's going to be the rival character that releases later on um in Yu-Gi-Oh! um arc 5 who knows or i think gong is just going to be the first unlockable character in the next month of Yu-Gi-Oh! arc 5 like what shark was for zaxo world so we'll have to wait and see that's for sure when everything comes out but it's still really fun to speculate even if people are getting unnecessarily upset about it and before we wrap up today's video i'm gonna be honest i think ddd doom king armageddon is probably gonna be declan's ace monster because in the character description that got leaked it didn't specify what his ace monster is gonna be but I think personally that's probably going to be Doom King Armageddon right here because it is a Pendulum card and again he used Pendulums a lot in the show and on top of that too Doom King Armageddon isn't that good. The other thing that would kind of suck is that if we got a summoning mo animation for this card compared to some of the other DDD boss monsters because a lot of the other DDD boss monsters look way cooler than my boy Armageddon but at the same time they might just make Armageddon the ace monster for him since it is a 3000 attack monster and the effects are not broken enough or it might not be locked in a box it might just be a free to play card from Declan himself we'll have to wait and see though or maybe they will just make it a UR of some sort of box we don't know yet it's uh, definitely up in the air on what his ace monster is going to be I did watch Brad's video a little bit and he was speculating that potentially we can get a structure deck EX that is a DDD structure deck EX when arc 5 world releases if Declan's going to be a day one character which would honestly be kind of cool but if we take a look at like dual links and whatnot sometimes they usually have like the day one structure decks be for characters that are like like ace characters for example we had for gx world we had a jaden structure deck along with the warrior structure deck with Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's world, we had a structure deck for Yusei, and when Zexa World came out, we had a structure deck for Yuma, so who knows if we'll get a structure deck EX for DDDs, but that would honestly be really cool. I think what would actually be even cooler is if they released two different structure decks for both Yuya and Declan, if they're both day one characters, like what they kind of did for GX World when it first came out, because when GX World first came out, they actually released a two warrior structure decks, one for Jaden and then one for Joey for whatever reason, but again, it was still a cool thing to have alongside of the good old, uh, you know, hero deck. So due to that, maybe they could release two structure decks, one for DDD, uh, Doom King Armageddon, and then maybe one for Pendulum Dragons or Odd Eyes or Performer Palace or something like that. That'd be really cool. We'll see if they switch it up because Konami has been doing a lot of different things anyways. But if we're going by trends, I don't know if that's going to be the case where we will get a DDD structure deck. But we'll definitely have to wait and see. It's a lot of fun to speculate, that's for sure. And yeah, that's actually going to be it for me in today's Dual Links video talking about the new Arc 5 stuff. If you guys did enjoy the news and coverage on this content, be sure to hit the like button on the video down below and subscribe to my channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Other than that, that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, everybody. Have a good one. One.